Let me give you some examples. Huh? In Matthew chapter 5 to chapter 7, you know, it begins with the genealogy of uh, Yeshua, you know, Mary, Elizabeth, confirming he was the son of David. And then he was born, went to Egypt to escape, Herod's, right? The three, how many wise men were there? Three? Three wise men, they said it was three. No number. It was more than three. And uh, they were visionaries, visionaries, seers. They, the Greek word they give is magi, which is a transliteration for Greek word for magicians. They were not magicians. <laughs> you see how that, you know, magi, magos, Greek word for magician, a magician. These were uh, visionaries in Israel that understood the prophecy from the first covenant. They were seers like Samuel was a seer, visionary. They see that which is not normally seen. Chazon. So I'm like, what? That was a... You know. <laughs> and then, so when Yeshua, when he was 30, 26 AD, then he, he came and uh, went to Yohanan to be immersed. And uh, I'll start at 3.15, and then just let me read through, and then we'll, we'll see. Because I'm sure you people already know the story, right? So, Matthew 3.15, verse 13. Then Yeshua will come from Galilee unto the Yardane, unto the Yardane before Yohanan to be immersed upon his hand. But Yohanan was inhibiting against him, saying, Is not but for I to immerse upon your hand, but you, you have come unto me? And Yeshua answered, and he said unto him, Let alone now, because thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righting of wrongs. Thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all satisfying of objective justice. And he let alone from him. And Yeshua, having been immersed and being prompted, then he went up from the water and see the heavens opened to him. And he saw all relating to the spirit of powers descending in the likeness of a dove and he rested upon him. J John saw that. Johannan saw that. Verse 17. And see a voice calling out of the heavens saying, This, he is my son, my beloved. In him my soul is satisfied. Then Yeshua was led up to the wilderness for the sake of Hasatan challenging him there. The Satan, right? Now, Hasatan, it always has that definite article before it in the scriptures, first covenant of. So, Hasatan, the Satan. But modern language, Greek, whatever, they're lazy, they always throw away <laughs> words, make things simpler and straight to the point, right? So, Hasatan does not have a, a, a crystalline figure or form. It's a, he was a, a cherub. A protecting messenger of the throne that Yahweh revealed himself through to the messengers. Okay, so the adversary, Hasatan, anything or anyone, whether it's a fallen messenger or an individual who's giving in to the thoughts and inspiration of that fallen cherub, is Hasatan. Right. When, when Joshua was before the throne, Job before the throne, when Peter was before Yeshua, Peter said, Yeshua told Peter, Peter, Satan, Hasatan is asking for you, but I'm praying for you. Don't. Peter didn't know he was there. When in Job, when the messengers came before Yahweh and Hasatan was with them, they didn't know he was there, right? And when Joshua, the high priest, uh, was before the throne in Zechariah, says and Hasatan was there next to him trying to accuse him. He didn't know he was there, right? So it says, uh, Then Yeshua was led up to the wilderness for the sake of Hasatan, the Satan, challenging him there. And he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and he was starving. Hebrew says he was starving because after... People fast for 39 days, the 40th day you die in. <laughs> so Yeshua, he was at the end of human 
capabilities to continue to live. The flesh was at its end. Okay, he was starving. Okay, and he was fasting forty days and forty nights, and he was starving. And the challenger approached, and he said unto him, "If the son of powers are you, speak, and these stones you will see for bread." Right, verse four, Matthew four four. But he answered and he said, "It has been written that not upon the bread alone." will the man live, but upon all coming out of the mouth of Yahweh. That's what it says in the Hebrew. Exactly how I'm writing. This is not no subjective. I'm a Hebrew person. I want Yahweh's name to be ah. Okay? I have <clears throat> several sources, and they confirm. Matthew 4, 5. Then, Hasatan, the Satan, took him unto the city of the sanctuary, the prepared place. And he stood him upon the corner of the roof of the house of the temple. Verse 6. And he said unto him, If the son of powers are you, throw yourself down to earth, because it was written that his messengers he will command for you. Upon their hands they will raise you up, lest you will strike against a stone your foot. Verse 7. And Yeshua said unto him, and again it was written, you will not test all related to Yahweh your powers. Verse 8, and Satan, and the Satan continued, uh, Satan continued, and he took him unto a very high mountain, and he showed him all relating to all the kingdoms of the earth and their honor. And he said unto him, all these I give to you. All relating to all these I will give to you if you will fall down and you will bow yourself to me. And Yeshua said unto him, <laughs> that here's a Hebrew idiom. He said, approach of being far removed, Hasatan, because it was written for Yahweh your powers, you will bow yourself down to. And him, all relating to him alone, you will serve. You get that? Approach of being far removed. Hasata. You understand that? Like because he was cast away. Yeah. He far Approach of being far removed, Hasata. Because it was written for Yahweh, your powers you will bow yourself down to. And all relating to him alone you will serve. Okay? Then, the Satan trembled away from him. He trembled away from him, and messengers approached unto him, and they ministered to him. Okay? So that, that goes into chapter 4, from 3, the immersion, and then up to the, the mount of testing, challenging. And then he shoot him, and he passed that, came down after being ministered to by the messengers. And then it, it was, uh, he heard about, and it was according to his hearing, Yeshua, that Yohanan was imprisoned. Then he returned toward the Galilee. Right? And he left Nazareth and he came and he settled in Kephar Nahum, upon the edge of the sea in the borders of Zebulun and Naphtali, to fulfill what was said by the hand of Yeshu, Yeshayahu, the prophet, saying, toward the land of Zebulun and toward the land of Naphtali, way of the sea, crossing over the Yardin Galilee of the nations. Okay, now here, watch how I get. Verse uh, 16. The people, the ones moving in the darkness, they saw a great light, and dwellers in the country of the shadow of death, light arose upon them. From that time, verse 17 and 4, from that time Yeshua began to proclaim and to say, Return from your way, because the kingdom of the heavens is approaching to come. Right? Yeshua began proclaiming, Return from your way, because the kingdom of the heavens is approaching to come. Right? In verse 18, And Yeshua was walking upon the sea of the Galilee, and he saw two brothers, Shimon, the one called Petros, and Andre, his brother, spreading out a net upon the face of the sea, because they were fishermen. 
Watch this. Stay with me. And he said unto them, Come after me, and I will make you to fishers of man. And they, verse 20, And they abandoned all relating to their nets according to the critical moment, and they walked after him. They didn't, I did in the upload, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 2, Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 32, Proverbs chapter 30, verse 6, and Revelation chapter 22, verse 18 and 19. That's from the beginning of the scriptures to the end of the writings, New Covenant. Warning people, men, do not add to or take away from the words of these instructions. And the translations that people have today have transgressed that command. They have added to and they've also taken away from what has been written. So in this passage, when Yeshua, he came down, now he's starting to herald, telling everybody to return from their way because the kingdom is approaching upon them, right? And so he saw Peter and Andrew, they were fishermen, and he said, come, follow me, right? Come after, walk after me. And they abandoned all what is written, their nets, according to the critical moment. That word, they did not translate. They skipped over that man. What's the critical moment? According to the critical moment, right? They abandoned their nets. What was that critical moment? When Adam and his Nikeva was together in the garden before they ate the tree, heaven and earth was conjoined. You know, was was there, was you you know what I'm saying? It was that mix. It's what now the prayer, if we pray the prayer every day, which Yeshua said, pray, when you pray, say, Our Father, who art in the heavens, right? Your kingdom come, your will be done. Where? On earth, as it is in the heavens, establish it, right? So that's what Yeshua allowed for to happen once again. What Adam and his Nikeva forfeited in the garden. Because Yahweh walked and talked with them in the garden, didn't he? Heaven was there, right? Mixed in and in control. And we, as the children, are supposed to be the vessels to make sure that happens again, right? So, when that question was posed to Peter and Andrew, right, they, they responded because of the critical moment. Now you've got a choice to make. Is, are you going to submit to heaven that is coming to be established in you and then through you or not at that critical moment? And he, verse 21, and he crossed over from there and he saw another two brothers, Yaakov, son of Zavdi, and Yohanan, his brother, in the boat with Zabdi their father, repairing their nets, and he called unto them. These both both these guys got successful businesses, right? So Yaakov and Yochanan was with their father, repairing their nets, and he called unto them. And also they, according to the critical moment, they abandoned all relating to the boat and all relating to their father. Here's where people today have problems. That's my mama, that's my father. And you, you know, remember when, I mean, we read it, but we just ignore it because we got that Greek mindset. That's opposite ends and different direction. We read it, but we don't put any weight to it. You understand? No, nah, my, that's my mom, that's my dad. You know who did that and died with him? Jonathan, Saul's son. Jonathan knew who David was. Saul knew who David was too. Then he became envious of him trying to kill him. Jonathan said, no, don't do that. Dad, come on, man. He's... Jo Jonathan loved him, right? And knew that he was going to become king. And they made a covenant with each other. When you become king, I know you are, be mindful of me. He said, no problem. They cut covenant, right? But Jonathan stayed more faithful to his father than what he knew about David. And they died with his daddy embarrassingly you follow we have to understand the context of our existence it's real last week I was you know trying to encourage someone 
they are frustrated. Things ain't going right. I'm trying to encourage them to properly align yourself. You see? So that the blessings that are waiting will just fall in place for you. Right? But then, you know, you're like, well, but this is the, you know, this is the real, real life. We got to go make money. We got to work. We got to do this, this. That's that's the real life. And I got upset, right? Ugh. The real life is what you can't see. And this is how we live. This is how I live. This ain't real. The real life is the life that you cannot see. You see? Does not the scripture tell us, don't walk by what you see, but what you don't see? <laughs> but what you see is temporary. But again, people don't believe it. Because they got that Greek mindset, which is at opposite ends and going a different direction. That's why Yahweh says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. I'm just going to read up to when he begins this, and then I'll close. Right? So, Yohanan and Yaakov, they abandoned their father, their boat, and walked after him. And Yeshua was turning about in all of the Galilee, and he was teaching there in houses of the gatherings, proclaiming messages of the kingdom. And he was healing every illness and every recurring sickness against the people. He was healing, watch this, and then I'll, I'll, he was healing every sickness, right? And every emotional pain against the people. Every sickness and every emotional pain. People are hurting inside. Not just crippled or got demons or whatever like that. He understands your background, where you came out of. You didn't have a daddy. You didn't have a mama. You're orphan. Nobody cared. You was tossed around. You follow me? You were violated as a child. Never was healed from it. Abandoned. Unloved. Abused, violated, raped, whatever. Emotionally scarred. He healed those too. But they don't translate that in the Greek trans. <laughs> right? Here's another correction about yours says, Matthew 4.23, yours says synagogues, right? That is a Greek transliteration, not a translation. See, that's a, that's a replacement word. An added word, which the scripture said don't do. The translation is Bait Kanas, house gatherings. And that's what they were doing. But these people put in their synagogue. And so now whenever you say the term synagogue, you automatically connect it to white Jew. Automatically. You can't even stop it. Because it's repetition, repetition, repetition. But it wasn't synagogue. It was house gathering, which is what they have legislated in our time over the generations us not to do, but to gather in public assemblies, which is also factoring into why we're not united and ruling the way of Yahweh and the way of how to live and purpose, how to live your purpose in life. Make sense what I'm saying? Is it too hard for people? Is it too tough? It's challenging, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and then Yeshua I'm, I'm just because just it's powerful and Yeshua was turning about in all of the Galilee and he was teaching there in houses of the gatherings proclaiming messages of the kingdom and he was healing every illness and every emotional pain against the people and his fame went out in all Aram right and they brought unto him all the sick ones which have, which have cleaved against them a variety of diseases and weaknesses, demoniacs possessed of spirits of evil, afflicted of lunacy and suffering bones, and he healed them. You know, cripple is a modern word, so suffering bones. A lunatic is uh, the word lunacy, lunar, moon. Someone who is uh, worshiping astral a messenger as a demon of astrology that, that has them possessed we need to be chased out 
lunatic lunacy so it is an uh, astral religion effect you know that's a lunatic people are not nobody's crazy it's a spirit in them a demonic spirit that just needs to be chased out and the hebrew says and he chased out the spirits so they want to stay there they want to stay in warm bodies and inhabit and they walked after him a gathering of a multitude from the galilee and from decapolis and from Jerusalem and yehuda and across the Jordan. Now, in chapter 5, it says, and it, and it was according to which he saw the outline of the people. He had a mass gathering, right? He went up unto the mountain, and he sat there, and they pushed forward unto him his disciples, because of the crowd. And he opened his mouth, and he was teaching to them, saying, then he began the Beatitudes, right? So from chapter 5 to chapter 7 are the Beatitudes, the attitude that you should have because he's giving you a new set of principles to live by. No more commandments. Because he's going to trust you to always be at that critical moment to make the right choice. You understand? Somebody comes to you for, for advice and they say, what should I do? This is like this. This person wants that. And this is like that. What should I do? And so Kyle says, you know the principle of love your neighbor as yourself. You make the choice. You understand? Parables are new covenant proverbs. It's the same Hebrew word for parable, mashal, for proverbs, is mashal. But you see how the translations they say, what's a proverb? I don't mean, a proverb. What is it? a pro proactive verb? What? Parable. Parabola, para. What is it? Something that goes parallel to what? You follow? See the confusion? You come. <laughs> Mishle. Proverbs. Parable. Mishle. Mashal. Same verb root. You know what it is? The function of it is to determine role or character. To rule. As children of the Most High, we should be ruling in every facet of existence. Because a ruler, he sees an object or an individual or a situation. And he, because of his holistic perspective, he understand the context of the incident or encounter and he determines the role and character of all of the individuals involved or situation. You understand? Okay. This animal, its function is this. This man, your function and purpose is this. And that's it. Man or animal, in it? So if the animal is not involved, it's man and man, isn't it? That's simple. So there's nothing that we cannot advise for function or success. That's, that's what a king is, malak, counsel, advice, listen to differing views. And then he rules, mashal, he determines the role and character of each and puts it in his proper context to harmonize the situation and it's win-win every single time. That is what we are called to be as sons and daughters of the Most High in our time today. So how can you have that great responsibility reflected to the Most High and follow after chickens? It don't make sense. And, and, and seeking those who say there is no powers to submit to for approval to do what is your natural right. That's crazy. That's lunacy. So time out for all that in Yeshua's name. Amen? Let's change the narrative. We're changing ourselves first. Our loved ones, our family, our neighbors, the community, the city, the nation, all of the earth. We outnumber everybody. Win win. Let's make it happen. In Jesus name. Next week I'll go into the Beatitudes. We can read and then bust those down. Because it's, it's doozy. Because after the Beatitudes from chapter 5 to chapter 7, then it's, it's, it's just like the Torah. After the Torah, Israel, what's recorded is how Israel obeyed. The instructions and teachings of the Torah or disobey them that's it if they disobey Yahweh sent the prophets to them to tell them to expose their error transgression and to tell them to warn them to get back to be obedient that's it right so Yeshua came new covenant introducing a new covenant right and so his lecture his Torah so to speak instructions and teachings are what they call the Beatitudes from chapter 5 to chapter 7 that's it. After that, 
everything recorded is him modeling, living according to the principle, and him conf and Yahweh confirming it with signs following, and then how they responded to it up until you close the book of the new covenant. Finished. Amen. Praise Yahweh. Amen. <laughs> shalom, shalom. <laughs> Right. Because the kingdom has been revealed. Yes. But it's hard to see. Yeah. Right. Uh, and here's where you have to check your pride at the door. Yeah. So that you can receive what uh, the conclusion of the matter is. You have to accept that we were all on our way to hell because we were in Satan's camp. We were all, <laughs> but Yahweh, you mean you tell me Psalm 94, right? And I'm reading Ezekiel now, right? And he's Babylon. I'm like, man, these things are long, drawn out chapters, 40, 50 of them. And he's constantly judging all these towns along with Jerusalem and Judah, Israel and Judah, you know. Submitting to Babylon, you know, because we're submitting to Babylon, you won't make it. Submitting to Babylon is condoning the authority of its uh, leadership. It's, I mean, you, 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 like, no, we, we got, we want to do this, but, but Yahweh says, don't do that. Come out from amongst them, be separate. You know, Israel is supposed to be alone. Yeah, we don't we don't consider no one else because unless we're influencing them to the way of purpose, because it's not working. The only reason why the world's setup is continuing is because we are scattered in its midst, and he won't like like when Abraham was appealing to him, "Will you judge Sodom if I find twenty people there?" He said, "If there's twenty, I won't do it." Couldn't find 20. 10, if there's 20, I won't do it. And he couldn't even find 10. And the ones that he found, they had to leave before he did it. So that's why things are being elongated in Russia, in Europe, in Africa, in America, in Canada, in Australia. Because the believers, those who claim believe, don't want to leave them. And so because of his mercy and compassion for his believers hoping that they wake up and come out but the longer they stay judgment is coming pole pole slowly slowly right and the longer they stay they take on the same sins and they will receive the same plagues and don't think that they're going to heaven to be with him but that's the Greek mindset Again, where you comfort yourself that you have salvation and you don't. <laughs> if you did, change would occur. You would have, you begin to affect your realm of influence, not you not known and conforming to and not trying to make waves or disturb. You understand what I'm saying? It's crazy. A perverted person. Don't make them feel uncomfortable. What? Man, you crazy? Homosexuality. What the hell is that? Oh, I answered my question. It's from hell. <laughs> make them feel comfortable. That's crazy. 
That's perversion. It's going to kill off everybody if we allow them to do that. One generation, all humanity will, will be extinct. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Why would you legislate somebody to live a life and to orient others to that life if it's going to cause extinction? Because they can't, watch this, watch this. They can't, they can't duplicate themselves, so they're going to, when you die out, you're gone, right? And if they say, okay, we want to live this lifestyle, but we can't reproduce, so let's become hypocrites and let the homosexual get with a lesbian so she can take his seed and have his baby. That's hypocrisy on both sides. And the claim is that the world is overpopulated. Come so on. with that in mind, it, it kind of helps them justify it. We're not, you're not adding numbers to an overpopulated world. Yeah. <laughs> And yet they looking for children because they're homosexual families. Hmm. They they're looking for children because they because it's a, it's foolish. Daddy's gonna be mom and daddy, so they adopt, right? It's satanic. It's and see how foolish we are. The the term overpopulation, praise Yahweh, He revealed to me with that in the nineties. Whenever you travel, wherever you are listening to this, all you got to do is go outside, go couple of hours or so outside of your city and just look. You go to the country and look. As far as I can see, you don't see no people. So why are you accepting overpopulation? It's a mindset. The Hebrew is a language that identifies with what you see, hear, smell, taste, and touch. The Greek wants you to deny what you see, hear, smell, taste, and touch. And they want you to accept the lies. Although you see otherwise. You follow me? You know, why is it that they condition from kindergarten, you, when you send them to the schools, they have a globe next on the teacher's desk. A globe signifying the earth is round. Without explaining it. Right? And so now we grow up believing that the earth is... But they don't have no proof of it outside of computer-generated images. Yeah? And when you're in a plane, those of you who've flown... 40,000 feet, 36,000 feet, whatever, right? <clears throat> the horizon is always at eye level. I don't care how high you get, you, the horizon will, is at eye level. It meets you. You know what that says? It's flat. If it wasn't flat, the higher you get, the horizon would go down. You see how they, they got us foolishly accepting lies. And if the earth... <laughs> We here in Kenya who live on the equator, right? We are going the fastest. So our inertia should be... Because <laughs> it's a thousand, a thousand miles per, per hour at the equator in that, that, that lie of a, a, a spherical Earth that's spinning. And those in North America, you're 10 degrees north of the equator, so you're going a little slower. And so, so then when you travel in an airplane then you should feel the, 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 the inertia change. And then you don't have to, the plane don't, you just you get in the helicopter and just let the helicopter get off the ground and then the earth will move and then you, you know, hurry up and try and catch it. Then it's going to be hard to land because then you got to, to catch the, <laughs> you got to take parachute lessons so you can drop. Oh, your place is coming up, it's coming up. Jump out now. No, I'm scared. Push, they push you. I got to go. We gotta... It's foolish when you, when you, Think about it. So, but, but, but it's, but that makes sense. The world is foolish outside of the light, outside of truth. So they need us to begin to function as Yahweh called us to function. And that's to be the light to the world. Expose their unfruitful works of darkness and uh, right the wrongs, set things in order and meet the needs of the victims of that false narrative in Yeshua's name. Amen. Let's be the light of the world. Uh, but first, you have to be free from the world and renew your mind to kingdom living and thinking. Chaya, Chai, Chaya is life living by virtue of Yahweh's thoughts. He dwells in you. He wants to reveal His wisdom, knowledge, power, through you, let him do it. Amen? Amen. Amen.